Yes, let's start. Okay. Fine. So, good evening, everyone who joined online and whoever is in the section. Today, we will be not studying anything. Okay, it's the good news. But we will also explore something much more important, which is the hard work that you guys have done all these years or one year, two year, and then what exactly gives you right whatever you have scored in the exam if you have scored a high score congratulations if you have scored a low score don't worry there are options as well for you guys so we will be trying to i will be trying to tell you about the different options that you also have considering all scenarios okay so i won't be considering today any topper anything it's a good uh, it's a very good congratulate yourself you're a topper but this class is actually actually for everyone who is watching this lecture and also who has attended the gate or even who has not attended the gate thinking it's difficult maybe out of fear or something what else can you do now you have options let me tell you beforehand let me give small spoiler ahead you have a lot of options in this lecture is only to enlighten you to exactly what options you guys are having so i will start the lecture with uh, a quick discussion on the best colleges that you can get considering your gate score and then um, i will follow up with some uh, tier 2 colleges tier 3 colleges and even if you want to go in a tier 1 college by not having a top 200 or 300 rank what can you do in that case okay so i am a live example for in that scenario for a person who actually was in iit madras okay by having a 500 rank okay so that is also one of the main criteria of this lecture how did i go into what is the advantage of doing an ms what is the disadvantage of doing an ms i am aditya i have an ms degree in iit madras in computer science so i can give you also guidance regarding anything that is related to ms degree in computer science or any degree in particular right but especially since i have done an ms degree in computer science i can help you to take a good decision okay so as always, as I said, my name is Aditya Agrawal and I had a gate rank of 502 in 2020. I am an MS by research in CSE department in the from, from IIT Madras. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so what are the options you have? Masters, PhD, PSUs, job options, what do you have, right? So let's begin with the tier one colleges. Okay, so first let's look at what are the different courses that you have if you're planning to do higher studies. You can go for an MTech. Few people call it MTech, few people call it ME. Both mean the same thing, right? But they just, they mean the same thing, right? MTech and ME mean the same thing. Followed by there is something called an MS degree, which I have. And some colleges call it MTech by research degree, okay? It's the same thing, okay? Don't be confused if a college is offering MS and one is not offering MS. It's offering MTech research. It's the same thing, okay? Direct PhD, we have an option where you where you don't have to do a master's from your B.Tech only. You can directly go for a PhD program. Why don't people do that? Why do people do that? You might have these questions, right? That's good to have, actually. You should know why they don't have it. Why, you, why still people don't go for it, okay? That's what this lecture is about. There is another called direct PhD under the PMRF, Pradhan Mantri Research Fellowship Program. Okay, what does it do? How does it help you? What is the difference between a direct PhD and a direct PhD under PMRF? We'll look into that. Also, you can do some management courses, PGD, MMS, or FFM. And masters, you can do abroad as well. Okay, few people who want to go abroad to do their masters, especially in countries like Germany and Singapore you are also not left out okay so that is what gate can give you so let's begin by the first thing tier one colleges as always okay okay before before actually going into it again okay this is just i want to go into that but we also need to discuss what are the different areas that are there in computer science from the technical standpoint you can do a master's in blockchain blockchain technology is also one of the most primarily used technologies in the world today you can go for a uh, masters in compilers okay how why do we need why do you do use the compilers i am myself a masters degree in IIT, iit madras where i worked in the field of compilers in the field of compilers why did i do that you can ask that question i can answer it no problem 
and what are the benefits of doing that also okay you can also choose to do something in theoretical computer science complexity of algorithms okay maybe you are the person who can prove np equal to p in the near future that is what tcs comes up in you can choose to do in architecture computer architecture lot of engineering happens in computer architecture how do you optimize the cache memory how do you optimize your main memory system how do you optimize your instruction instruction scheduling ilp dlp if you guys have studied all that right so how do you try to optimize them using different techniques and nowadays uh, machine learning is also coming in architecture right so that is also there and also we have something called artificial intelligence or machine learning which is a new hot topic in town now and uh, star means there is a separate exam from this year as you guys know it's called gate da and reinforcement learning is also part of the ai landscape all those belongs to the star means they are not gate cs they are particularly gate d okay fine let's move ahead okay so as i was saying this is the main thing about all this criteria and all which is tier 1 colleges that you can do an mtech in csc or ai which colleges offer an mtech in cs which colleges offer mtech in ai and what are the preferences that you have these are for people like i will write what is the required rank also for people again i for for any loss of generality i will quote all the ranks that are required for the general category students typically for the other category students you can also kind of mix around that but also i have a table for you guys that list the last year cutoffs for each of these tier 1 colleges in the next slide okay for all categories but here if your rank falls less than 300 you can either try this if you are interested in generic computer science which is preference one or you can go for an mtech in ai in any of the colleges on the right on the preference one in the ai field okay so again few people might have a question i had a question when i was studying that what is the difference between an mtech in cs and mtech in ai and can i do a can i still study ai if i am a cs student obviously you can there is no one stopping you to do that ai means you have already done that they have taken the decision that in computer science there is only one discipline i want to study which is ai okay mtech in cs is a more broad term you can go for the different areas i talked about in the last slide right so if you are sure that i want to do ai only nothing else then maybe do an mtech in ai okay because mtech in ai if I, if you show it to people that i have an mtech in ai from iisc bangalore company is going to run after you okay or if you are if you are not sure if you think ki chalo thoda dekh lete hai let's examine the options you i have then you can go for an mtech in cs you have time till the first semester 6 months to decide actually what you want to do do you want to do in ai do you want to do in blockchain do you want to do in architecture do you want to do in compilers do you want to do in graphics do you want to do in gpus lot of options you can assess yourself and then take the right decision okay but if you are already fixed ki nahi i will do ai only then probably mtech in ai would be a better option here in this scenario okay so also for computer science preference two are the colleges which are typically the newer iits or tier 2 tier 3 iits okay still i call them tier 1 colleges because they are iits at the end of the day so tier 2 tier 3 colleges tier 2 tier 3 iits and uh, for example roper has an mtech in ai program as well which was one of my dream uh, branches i want to go into mtech in ai in roper i had gotten that as well in my counseling when i was sitting for the counseling but uh, i chose to do uh, ms degree in iit madras state so there are options in uh, computer science where you can go to roper bhubneshwar varanasi iit bhu indore gandhinagar gandhinagar i can put a star if anyone can tell me why gets a chocolate okay gandhinagar that's why because gandhinagar has an interview You have to give an interview to get an MTech degree, MTech program. It's not just gate score. You have to give an interview. Tirupati, Bilai, Mandi, Patna are there as well. These are all newer IITs again. You can choose to do that as well. 
and preference two is for people who have less than 800 rank i'm not saying you can get all the colleges if you have an 800 rank but if you have a less than 800 rank certainly you can get any college in the preference two and it should be obviously greater than 300 because if you have a rank less than 300 then go for the preference one right so again don't quote me again saying aditya said isc bangalore less than 300 rank i can get no you can't i'm not saying that if you have a rank of less than 300 you will get some of these colleges as well you can get iit guwahati for example you can get iit roorkee as well i think i missed here writing that iit roorkee is also one of the premier colleges okay iit roorkee okay so let me write it properly because that college deserves attention iit roorkee okay the oldest college in asia if you guys don't know so IIT Roorkee is also falls in this category. You can get IIT Roorkee, Guwahati, if you have a 300 rank. Top 200 gets you IIT Madras, IIT Kharagpur, IIT Kanpur. Top 100 gets you IIC Bangalore and IIT Bombay and IIT Delhi. Okay. And preference to for computer science, IIT Roper gets you in about 600 rank or so. And others also you can get accordingly as well. Okay. Here, if you see in preference one, there is one IIT, which is a new IIT. But it's an amazing IIT, okay, which is IIT Hyderabad. You can also try IIT Hyderabad. Lot of good professors are there. And let me give you a small uh, fact. When I was sitting for the counseling, IIT Hyderabad had a greater cutoff than either of Guwahati and Roorkee. Okay, so means people were preferring more to go to Hyderabad than either Guwahati or Roorkee. Because Hyderabad has had a lot of investment off lately. It's an amazing college to teach. Uh, is to study if you go and uh, look at the cv course computer vision course given in NPTEL by by a professor in iit hyderabad we need bala subramaniam that is actually one of the best courses in computer vision till date okay so that's what i'm trying to say that iit hyderabad has the one of the best faculty in the entire uh, space of iits as well in the current world but if you better an IIT IITs are Madras, Delhi, Bombay, Kanpur, Kharagpur, all these are like always the best, right? Always, always, they will be always good, right? And ISE Bangalore is known as the best college for doing the master's program. So this was about tier one, okay? And uh, tier one, you can't actually say that uh, Delhi, Bombay, mein, who is better? Both are the best colleges. Madras versus Bombay, both are the best colleges. Depends on where you want to go, okay? I mean, Chennai ka man hai. you want to go to Chennai, go to Madras, you Delhi ka man hai. go to Delhi. Okay, it should be like that. Okay, all the colleges are top, top colleges for doing MTech. In MS, things change a bit. Some colleges are better, some colleges are not that good when it comes to MS programs. But yeah, for MTech, there's not much uh, of a difference between all of them. Typically, IIT Bombay is known as the IIT for best placements. The placement program is very, very good there. Okay. So we can maybe try that, but it's not that Bombay ka it's very good. So others are not very good, right? All are good. Bombay has the best. So this is what I wanted to talk about tier one. Okay. Tier one, not much discussion to be done, to be honest. But here is an interesting thing for all of you, which is the cutoffs that were present for last year. I collected it from various sources. Um, and what are the cutoffs? What are the different courses you can do considering you have an MTech in CS? Sorry, you have a GATE CS score. Let's say, what are the different courses you can do? And what is the cutoff? Okay, this was for last year. Okay, the information is scattered around the web. I just collated it and bought it in one place. So, IIT Delhi has three courses VLSI, Design Technology, Computer Science, and CTEC, Computer Technology. IIT Madras has one for you, CS. Bombay has one, CS. Kanpur has CS. Patna has two, CS and uh, Maths and Computing. And if you see, these are the scores. These are not the ranks, okay? Don't quote me again that why is 800 rank for Madras? No, that's a score, okay? Score and rank are inversely proportional. More the score, less the rank. So, okay. So these are the scores. Let me clarify that. For different categories, what score you have to have in order to get different IITs. So you have an IIT starting from 550-ish all the way till 1000. And 1000 is obvious to say, right? Because 1000 is 1000. Yeah. 
thousand is the max you can get. So, see, and um, uh, uh, CTEC is there in IIT Delhi. VLSI is there. VLSI is an interdisciplinary course between the departments electrical and computer science. If you are interested to go for uh, chip designing, process designing, and all that stuff, then VLSI would be a good stuff, good thing to do. CTEC is more of an applied CS field. Okay, it's like microcontroller, microchips, and all that stuff, microprocessing, and all that. It's not core CS, it's implied CS field. Like for example, data science. See, there's one thing that I will suggest you being a CS student. There are two, two things in CS. One is core CS, one is applied CS. What is core CS? Core CS is what you actually learn inside a computer, which is your architecture, your compiler, your OS. If you have read those subjects, what you learn is exactly what's going on inside a computer, which is the core computer science field. Applied CS is, machine learning and AI. If I tell you to train a machine learning model, you don't go ahead and say, nah, oh, this is the instruction at PC address this and this guy said this. No, whatever concepts are there in computer science, you just apply them to train your model. Okay, you have some knowledge in data structures, right? You apply some data structures and to store the data and apply the model. So AI and ML is more of a applied CS field while architecture compilers, OS are all a core CS field. It depends on whether you are for what you have n for. If you like more com core computer science, hardware and all, for example, I will raise my hand here for that case. Then you can use, then you can go for core CS. If you are more like AIML, jargon friendly, jargon person, like AIML, the new hot topic in town, then maybe AIML is also not a bad option at all. Okay, nothing is bad an option. Okay, fine. So before I go ahead into this, uh, before I go ahead to the next year, so exactly what one should do at this point, right? If you have this score, first of all, throw a party, congratulate yourself. You must have done it by now. But apart from that, uh, what you should do is start working on your DSA skills. Okay, what is DSA skills? There are, you guys are experts, right? You There are calls, websites like Lead Code. There are websites like Code Forces. Start solving problems on that. Because I will tell you, MTech is a two year program. When does your MTech start? When does your MTech end? You won't even realize. It's like you slept today, starting MTech, you woke up, MTech khatam, finished. You are placed and you are going out. You won't even have time to actually do anything that uh, during your mtech if you think oh, during my mtech i will do coding no people have done it i'm not saying people haven't done it it's more like you have free time now i'm not saying you to do all day you also need to chill out you have marks you have done the hard work you also have to chill out you also have to uh, enjoy your life but still start actually solving one problem per day on lead code or something that will help you to edge past the competition because think of it this way the top 100 rank go to IIT Delhi, not IIT Bombay or anywhere. So if you join IIT Bombay, you are surrounded by few people who are also top 100 ranks. Obviously, right? Who are also top 100 ranks. So you have done your hard work and went to IIT Bombay. Now within IIT Bombay, there are like, uh, let's say 30 people. You have to compete against these 30 people. How do you do that? You can start today. Okay, so start working on your coding skills. If you love to do AI machine learning, learn more on it. There are a lot of ample resources on the internet. Don't just waste your time like, like that. Okay. And um, there was a quote, let me quote that directly from one of the people. He said, few people have often told me that uh, uh, after BTEC, I don't want to study uh, before my MTech starts because I want to all because in my BTEC, I want to take a break. Okay, I want to take a break. That's why after after my great CS exam, I want to take a break and then start studying properly. Okay, for ninety nine percent of the people here, okay, your entire four years of BTEC might be a break. Okay, so I'm not saying that uh, don't enjoy. Please enjoy your life. Please party hard and all that. But also you can start doing your honing your DSA skills for better career. Okay, in the future. Let's go to tier one, second preference. But here 
I talk about MS. Okay, this is a topic I would love to talk about. Okay, I can go hours, but I will still try to constrict myself to a given timeline. I don't want to bore you guys. These are colleges, the same colleges you can see, right? IIC Bangalore, IIT Madras, IIT Delhi, IIT Bombay, IIT Kanpur. All are top IITs again. Reference to me, you have IIT Indore. But this is something called MSY research or project in the field of computer science. These are for people who typically have a rank of less than or equal to 600. Or, or for the like, let's say for tier one, preference one, it could be for less than or equal to 700. 700 for uh, because uh, they do typically, typically how MS admissions work is typically they um, take a test. They shortlist a lot of people. They take a test. Test is of a coding, basic coding background, some coding test. Debugging could also be there, right? And um, then you will have an interview. Okay. Achha. So, so let's talk about one of the particular MS programs, which is the MS program at IIT Madras. Okay. Because personal experience. Right? So IIT Madras MS program. Achha. One natural question which people have in their mind is, MTech in IIT Madras has needs a top 200 rank. Hmm? MS in IIT Madras needs a top 700 rank. Okay. So why do people consider MS, uh, consider MTech and not MS? Right. It's a natural question to us. Both are IIT Madras. IIT Madras, there is no IIT Madras MTech, there is no IIT Madras MS. IIT Madras is just one college. There is an MTech program, there is an MS program. So what is the difference? Right? Why do people prefer MTech than MS? Good question. There are two reasons behind it. First reason is if you don't like research. Okay, research, you have to spend your um, spend your time a lot on research. You work two years on a research problem. If it works, well and good. If it doesn't, sorry, doesn't work. If it doesn't work, then sorry. Okay. Um, most typically, if you are in good IITs and IICs, IIC, then it will work. Okay, if you are in IIC, then it will work. IIT, good IITs will work because you will have someone called a guide who is one of the professors at IIT Madras or any IIT, any IIT where you do an MTech program or a MS program or MTech by research program. M MS program or MTech by research program, and uh, you will have a guide and all. Okay, and typically that is not the case. But the thing is, if you don't have enthu on going through a problem day and night from morning till evening, then maybe MS won't be the right right option for you. That is reason one. Reason two would be MTech is like, if you want to get an MTech in IIT Madras and you have a rank of top 200, just go, just apply, you'll get the call, go. But for MS, you have to give an exam, you have to appear for an interview, then you might get, there's a difference, right? So people might not want to take that risk if they get a top 200 rank. By I Mtech, I can get directly Mtech with the gate score. Why do I even try for an MS? They directly do an Mtech. There are people who had top 200 ranks. They have gone for MS because they have a lot of enthu for research. So it's like there are two reasons. Now you can quantify which reason is more appropriate for you. Do you not like research more? Is that a better? Is that a more convincing reason for you or the other one? Okay, so that is the reason why, but there's the, again, so let me tell you one more thing. MS research program and MTech research program, uh, sorry, MTech coursework program, which is the best thing. I mean, which is the thing that I talked about in the previous slide. Both of you guys get the same placements. There is no company that does a differentiation between an MTech coursework guy and an MS research guy. Okay, let me tell that this. I am personally, I'm telling you because I am an MS student. I was an MS student. There is no difference among that. MS, according to me, is a more rewarding career than MTech. Let me tell you how. Again, for people who believe in the first reason that they don't have an enthu for research, this, all whatever I say in the next 40 seconds won't make any sense to you. But for people who still have a little bit enthu or who are like, they do up kuch bhi, or give me anything you want, anything you have, then for them, I'm telling it. MS is a more rewarding career in the sense, 
let me tell about myself okay i don't want to boast about myself it's just that i want to tell give you guidance on what decision you want to take and decision you will take because it's your career but i i'm only here to guide you i did an ms research in cs in the field of compilers especially in parallel programming okay and um, typically an ms research program depends on you have to publish a paper in 99% cases you will publish a paper because that's the quality of doing an ms in iits your guide and all would be very helpful in that scenario it is difficult just like mtech okay you will have to spend countless nights doing assignments doing a, working on your research all that is normal okay once you have joined an mtech or ms program make sure you will you will actually have to do this okay and then i had a publication and uh, i had a paper uh, that i published in one of the top conferences in uh, in the world which is parallel architectures and compilation techniques and uh, just to just to advertise ms more here uh, last october 2023 i had a paid trip to vienna to to present my paper iit madras paid the entire amount and all that so all that is there okay all that is there so if you want to go abroad if you want to have a publication if you have an enthu for research or if you are like 50 50 go for an ms if you don't want to risk on a interview plus exam criteria don't go for ms and if you are um, if you if you think you don't have an enthu for research you don't you feel like you can't you don't want to do a research program then also you can probably do an mtech both are amazing programs okay there is no ha uh, mtech mein my, someone might might ask this was about ms what about mtech mtech will typically consist of some amount of courses you have to do in your first semester and second semester and then you sit for placements get a job and go out okay it's that simple first year courses second year placement tata bye bye okay the only disadvantage having an ms program could be you might not gain profitable outcome from your research work may not anything can happen right you thought something that will happen as you want two years later and you are not that uh, far sighted your far sightedness had some issue in the sense even after one year you found there is an issue with it then um, maybe you have to spend some more time ms has no defined criteria to leave the program okay that's a disadvantage mtech is a fixed two year program okay and then you can get a placement at uh, get graduated and uh, proceed with your life so mtech um, in that sense could be also better program okay it's a matter of choice again guys uh, not say no no profession is uh, less or more it's more like whichever college you go okay now it's now few people have typically do this mistake that um they go for triple a, sorry i don't want to name colleges here the the few people went for go for private colleges they have a less than 700 rank they go for private colleges mtech two year program rather than an ms degree in the premier iits or iic bangalore so that is also not something that i would prefer you to do because uh, getting a degree learning from these there is a reason why iit madras or iit delhi is iit delhi right there is a reason okay because the amount the 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 people there the faculty the students you will mingle with right the environment that you will get you will actually come out as a different person after two years or three years okay so that is why people go to these colleges there is no other reason you can sit on your home prepare for coding exams crack a job that is so simple nowadays right but still why do we go to iits because we get a platform we get a platform to prove ourselves to learn to enjoy college life again okay we also enjoy a lot iitians they don't just study we are not geeks if you ask an iitian whether he is a geek he or she is a geek he will laugh at you no one is a geek here but we know if we have to do something by today we will do something by today no matter we have gone out for no matter how many time of us the entire day okay so that is what i wanted to just guide you in this case okay first tip is matter of choice between taking an mtech and ms depends on two reasons one is you would want to take an mtech if you don't have if you feel you don't have an enthu for research and the second reason is you want to do an mtech if you don't want to go through the interview process and the test process again okay 
these are the two reasons i can say why one would prefer an mtech over ms why would one prefer ms over mtech if they have an n2 for research obviously and the other reason is if they have a lesser rank which is less than 700 and they still want to go for a uh, premier college okay this is the summary two points that i wanted to give from what i said moving on if you guys have any questions feel free to ask okay this no this i'm not teaching anything okay no concepts today except one thing i will teach okay fine so how to prepare for interview this is also one question see whatever questions i had when i gave my gate the same i put it here so that it will be helpful for you okay you might have similar questions you might have more questions feel free to ask them no issues okay uh, so now let's talk about how to prepare for an interview hmm? you have done the gate uh, cracked the gate uh, you have a 700 rank less than 700 rank you apply to IIT Madras, IIC Bangalore and all that stuff. You give a test exam. Test is a typically two hour coding exam. Some I, some colleges might also give you an MCQ, C++ or C MCQ. Okay. So for the written test, make sure you know all the concepts taught in the subject PDS. Okay. Let me just write this down. So for the written test, okay, make sure you know everything about P and DS which is programming and data structure, right? And also algorithms. Few people call them the same. I'm just calling it different because I want to call it, okay? So P and DS and algorithms, make sure you know these things, okay? Some colleges might have a gate MCQ as well on the core computer science part, which is your OS, your computer architecture, compiler and all that. For that, you can study your gate, gate you know already gate right you already studied for the gate so whatever concepts you studied for the gate you can just revise them all from your notes okay also also when when i was studying uh, iit madras typically in their ms test program had another subject for computer science which is actually not in the gate cs syllabus which is signals and systems you can choose to study it you can choose not to study it it's up to you okay but make sure you are thorough with your gate CS. If you are thorough, if you have free time, if you think I want to study more, then no, no one is stopping you, okay? Now, how to prepare for interview? Hmm. So out of all the subjects you had in gate, right? Um, how, how are questions asked typically, okay? So typically what questions will be asked is the questions will be based on a mixture of all the subjects that you have read. How? If I ask you a question, okay, again, I don't want to give a lecture, but this is important. Let's say you have a C program. You wrote a C program. Hmm? This is your CPU. Starting from the C program that you wrote, how will the computer execute the first instruction on the CPU? I can ask you this question and I will tell you the answer very briefly also. Okay. Detailed answer again. See, whatever I tell you now, right? You will, you have actually studied everything. You just need to connect the dots. How let, that's why I'm giving you this example. A C program is written in a human language format. Everyone knows that there is a program that you use to convert it into binary machine code. What is that program? It is called compiler. Subjects I will write in blue. Okay. Hmm. Have you studied a subject called compiler design? Yes. See, nothing new I will teach. It gives you something called a machine code. Okay. We have reached till here. Now, this machine code, which is your A dot out, lives in the secondary memory only. You have to bring it to the primary memory so how do you bring it to the primary memory who brings it to the primary memory the operating system brings it to the primary memory memory management subject where will the machine code be placed in the primary memory you guys have studied first fit next fit best fit right there it will place it now the OS among all the processes that are present in the primary memory will do the process scheduling. 
you might have used a process scheduling algorithm like uh, round robin all that you have studied right nothing new i am seeing but see how i am connecting the things here once you have scheduled it that this is a process i want to execute so let's say this is the program one i want to execute this is now in the main memory and i choose to execute this program primary memory how what do i do what is the first address in the memory i will load it into something called the pc register the pc register sends it to the mar memory address register the memory address register goes to the memory and fetches that instruction back and this is how the instruction is executed see this this part the pc and the mar part which subject is this which subject is this this is coa this is coa understood the connect this is how questions will be asked in the interview this is an example okay chalo so how to prepare for interview prepare all subjects till the gate level hmm and prepare one subject more than the gate level for example you might want to go ahead and read more about os operating system there are many things that are not present in the gate syllabus that you may choose to go through more for example let me give you another example okay uh let me erase this it's fine i guess so let me give you another small example of how questions are formed how many of you guys have used a printer i hope everyone has used a printer okay so let's say there are there are two threads working in parallel hmm? both of them want to print a document on the printer you have only one printer so this is the printer t1 comes and gives document d to the printer d1 let's say and you have implemented some synchronization saying hey so if um, if when when the printer is busy printing something t2 will wait t2 will not actually go ahead and give the document d2 because then it will be a race condition right when one guy is using the resource printer then um, then then other should be waiting i will tell you this i don't like this solution why should t2 wait and and let's say t1 is working at 1 mbps oh, sorry 1 megahertz sorry 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 1 <laughs> megahertz which means it is able to execute 1 million instructions per second the printer is printing at a much lower speed let's say 100 hertz let's say okay 100 hertz why should t1 wait why should t1 wait for the printer to print it's wasting resource na it has given something to the printer let it print okay so what will you do in that case there is a concept in os which you have not studied in your gate few people might have studied out of interest called spooling read about spooling and how spooling helps to solve this problem these are some of the questions that may be asked in the exam uh, in the interview okay typically for iit madras i can tell you there the interview structure around the fact that in the first uh, in the first half an hour you will be given a c program to write um for me it was uh, matrix multiplication but hold on don't uh, don't uh, be excited it's matrix multiplication um it i had to write a generic function which takes a double pointer as argument so you need to do malloc am malloc of 2d array okay am malloc of 2d array you need to know how to do okay that is one of the things they wanted to ask it will return a in double pointer okay and uh, that is what uh, was asked to, to me and then uh, yeah, i actually appeared for the linear algebra subject so they asked me questions on the linear algebra standpoint how to pre prepare linear algebra one there is one person in the internet Uh, his name is gilbert strand uh, many people have read his courses even me personally have done his course so maybe you can go ahead and look at that also in our igc channel you can have there is also a crash course done on linear algebra if you are in a hurry there are previous year questions solved as well uh, you can also look at that as well 
TCS theoretical computer science you can prepare for the algorithms part time complexity right the complexity classes np p n p n p hard n p complete all that and uh, ai ml again it's star because recruitment would could be through gate da okay because they have a separate exam now and for that uh, you can study your ml uh, linear algebra or your probability and blockchain you need to study your databases and algorithms part okay uh so this is what to how to prepare for the interview you need to learn how to connect the dots everything you have studied isolately right everything you have studied you studied architecture you studied operating system you studied dsa you studied compilers how do you connect them together is the thing that you have to do that is what they will ask okay no one ask technical jargons no one will come and ask you hey do you know bankers algorithm what is bankers no no one will ask you they will frame your problem saying how can you avoid deadlock before actually running the before actually allocating the resources then you have to come up with the bankers algorithm and how bankers algorithm came into the whole picture that's how they will ask okay right. so this was to how to prepare for the interview um ha huh. now let's say you are don't like tier 1 for some reason tier 1 colleges and uh, you have a rank of again less than 700 you don't want to go for an ms it say i don't want to study for exam or anything okay fine i respect your decision no problem we you still have options for you which is mtech on to your program on computer science on these colleges which are your top nits nit tiruchirappalli or trichy NIT Varangal, NIT Raurkela, NIT Suratkal, or NIT Alaba. These are the top NITs in the in India today. Okay, there are some other NITs as well. Durgapur, Hamirpur, Surat, Suratkal is written already. Hamirpur, Kurukshetra, Kurukshetra is another NIT as well. Okay, NITs are typically the tier two colleges where you can also. It's more about what type of environment will you get in an NIT. You definitely get also a good environment of students. Who want to actually make a mark for themselves and that is what matters for preference too you can look at indian institute of space technology iist trivandrum or the defense institute of advanced technology pune or nit surat or triple it dm kanchipuram and there are others as well that you can also look at and one of the other things that i can suggest you here i thought go to right i guess it was one good college that comes here which is triple it bangalore i will go to the og triple it later okay i will go to the best triple it later which is hyderabad but if you want something in gate score triple it bangalore is also an amazing option okay the only reason why you would not want to go to triple it bangalore could be the fees it's a private college and um, certainly for private colleges everything is managed by what you pay everything they do is what you pay they don't have governmental support like government colleges so that's why private colleges have a higher fees compared to government colleges that is the only drawback but um, it's an amazing college to go to here again if you have a rank of less than or equal to 1000 consider yourself lucky you fall in the preference one and if you have a rank of less than or equal to 1500 you fall in the preference two okay so this is what i had to say here again apply for triple it bangalore guys who don't have a top 500 rank that is the best option that you have and if you don't want to pay that much i respect your decision guys everyone is coming from different backgrounds i don't want to say that it's absolutely okay okay then maybe go for an nit or go for an ms program in iit madras just to give a contrasting example my entire ms program the fees was about 1.5 lakh for the entire duration and also that i was able to pay and everything using the stipend i used to get so you if you guys don't know till now mtech and ms program gives you a stipend of 12400 per month okay which is to enough for your fees also at iits okay moving ahead direct phd there is something called direct phd program as well which is after your btech you gave a gate cs exam you want to go for phd directly you are you are determined that i want to 
grab a PhD. You are determined that I don't want to waste two years, three years on a master's. Again, I'm saying what people think. I'm not saying master is a waste. What people think is I don't want to waste my two, three years of master's. I will directly go for a PhD. And um, these are the IITs that allow you to go for a direct PhD. The cutoffs are definitely low because no, not everyone wants to commit for a direct PhD just after their BTEC. They want to explore options. But still, if you have that enthu, if you want to do a direct PhD for computer science, then you can also join this program. As I said, there is another thing called uh, direct PhD okay, so with PMRF. Okay. What is PMRF? PMRF is called Pradhan Mantri Research Fellowship. It was started in 2014 when the new government came to power. Uh, typically, what happens is typically in, in any IIT, let's say IIT Madras, hmm, you get a PhD stipend, which is you will get about um, uh, 30K or so for the first two, two years and then 35K for the rest three years. Different IITs are different stipends. I think Harakpur has 30,000 or 40,000 or something. Uh, Delhi has something 30, 35,000 as well. ISC Bangalore also has the same. Pradhan Mantri Research Fellowship gives you a stipend of 70,000 per month. And hold on, that will be tax free also. You don't have to pay a single tax. So 70,000 per month you will get on your first year. Then it will be increased by 5,000, 75 then 80, then, then 85, and that's it, okay? So 85,000 you will get just like that, uh, not just like that, sorry, if you do a, a direct PhD under PMRF. So how do you get a PMRF? Once you join a direct PhD program, you have to appear for an interview inside your college only, and that's how you will get PMRF. Not everyone gets a PMRF, obviously, because it's difficult, because it's, uh, it's it is, it's not um, like every, you, you can't pay every PhD a PMRF, right? But um, but uh, but it's not very difficult also because the interview is not very not very difficult <laughs> again. So but uh, you you have to give a presentation and all that about what research you are planning to do, what is the problem that you are planning to solve, why are you wanting to do a PhD, and uh, that's how you can get a PMRF. PMRF also gives you an advantage to um, not advantage actually, but PMRF actually gives you allows you to do some extra work, which is you have to do extra TA work and maybe you can join your guides and PTEL course as a TA or you can or you can also choose to teach at a nearby Kendriya Vidyalaya school in the same IIT itself. So there are that there are some extra things you have to do, but it's a rewarding career 70,000 per month, which is a huge amount. OK, especially if you are in IITs because the fees is very less, right? Six months fees you can pay using one month salary. It's that that is easy, I can tell you. So it's a very rewarding career, but only do it if you feel that you want to do a PhD. Don't go for money, guys, when it comes to PhD. Think about your whether you want to actually do research or not. If you want, please feel free and go ahead. I have your I will give you your full support if you don't want to do it. Or the other thing that you can do is what people tend to do is they join an MS program just to see if they want to do a PhD or not. Okay. MS is a mini PhD. Okay. Within the two years, in let's say in IIT Madras, I'm speaking, before two years, you can convert to a PhD program if you want to. So if you think you want to do a PhD, you can convert. Once you convert, you apply for PMRF. And if you get it, then well and good. Okay. So that's how things work in, 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 in IITs. If you're not sure, if you're if you're sure that I don't want to do research at all, don't go for MS. If you want to see explore options, MS like I did. So you can join MS and think about going for a PhD later. So that is the thing that I wanted to see. Along with that, there are a few people who also want to want to maybe go abroad. Okay, for people who have not given the exams that are particular to the going abroad, don't worry. Some colleges are there for you as well. NUS is known as the one of the best colleges for computer science in Asia, National University of Singapore. It has a sister college called NTU, Nanya Technological University. RWTH Achen is one more college in Germany. And TU Munich or Technical Research Germany, Technical Institute of Munich, TUM Munich is also one of the primary colleges there as well. So NUS, I will give you one more small tip. 
in us typically see if you want to go abroad you have to pay also right that much so for an nus the per year fees is about 22 lakhs hmm there is a scheme that will give you at 11 lakhs that there is a scheme that by which you can do it in 11 lakhs per year अब ये स्कीम क्या है वॉट इज दिस स्कीम द स्कीम इज यू विल साइन समथिंग कॉल्ड एन अग्रीमेंट थिंग इट्स कॉल्ड एन अग्रीमेंट इट्स कॉल्ड अ परमिट मेनी थिंग्स आर कॉल्ड इट्स कॉल्ड इंटरचेंजेबली मेनी थिंग यू मे कॉल द अग्रीमेंट ऑफ द परमिट सेज आफ्टर योर एम टेक प्रोग्राम और एम एस प्रोग्राम टू ईयर एम एस प्रोग्राम इन फॉरन इट्स कॉल एम एस एम टेक इज कॉल एम एस इन फॉरन इन इन आउटसाइड इंडिया सो once after you complete your ms program that is two year program you have to work in singapore for three years minimum if you plan to do, if you you are bound to do that you can't come back your visa won't be approved okay so don't think i can fool around okay so once you have completed your ms program then if you plan to work for three years in singapore you can sign a permit and that will give you a 50% discount again for more information go to their website you can look into their website as well i am saying this because few people might run away saying oh bahut paisa hai too much money i have to pay see i understand okay that's why i am saying and i am respecting each profession here each one's financial condition equally well but i also have to talk about people who can afford it right so people who can afford 11 lakhs as well you have an option okay so you have an option okay so you can also look and that's just and what is the tuition fee at tum anyone technical university i mentioned or what is the tuition fee at rwt rwt jachan it is big fat zero there is no tuition fee what you pay is only for living okay so europe is an expensive country to live let, let me tell you that before and but you don't have to pay any tuition fee so how to okay 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 so i have a question in the youtube channel live stream how to stay motivated hmm. see around 22 lakh hmm see as i said it depends on the financial condition and all that scenario but uh, 22 lakhs looks more pay 11 lakhs na right for two years you will pay 22 only that's like 11 lakh per year is 22 for two years but um, that is also something you can do but again if you don't have that, if you don't if you are not that financially uh, strong it's okay it's okay you have options i told options before also right you have nits you have triple its you have iits right you have options if you feel you can spend you go ahead and spend okay and um, typically what i will, what i used to think about when i was preparing for the gate was uh, there's something called roi return on investment so whatever you put money in what is the return you will get certainly for iits it's huge huge like huge okay well, you pay 1 to 2 lakhs entire fees for iit and look at the value that you get by paying that right so that is how i think of things again few people might say nus is a good call nus is actually the best college in asia for cs let me tell you that one of the best colleges in asia is nus there's one college in china called singchua one more problem that people do is don't go for rankings that are very common rankings i'm not saying they are wrong they are absolutely correct those common rankings rank colleges across all different domains if some college ka civil engineering is good how does it matter to you if some colleges mechanical engineering is the best how does it matter to you if some colleges aerospace engineering is the best how does it matter to you you are a cs student right so go to this college and look at the rankings before taking any decision csrankings.org Okay, keep this in your bookmark whenever you are trying to find a college to study abroad. What is the scope of building new startup in IIT Bombay? Very good question. So typically, typical, sorry, typically there are many IITs like Bombay, Delhi, Madras. They have something called a incubator. Who is an incubator? So let's say if you have an idea, an amazing idea to build a startup. you can pitch your idea to the incubators they will pay fund you and uh, they will take obviously some equity of your startup they will support you as well and um, you can be assured that the funds you will get from the college incubate con- incubation cell 
that you can be assured this is typically promoted a lot now is nowadays in iits because in iits people want to also people want students to also build new startups okay so there are incubation cells that can help you to build new startups when it comes to funding when it comes to uh, engineering engineering uh, advice and all that so all that you can get it in by going to any incubator cell like isc and ism dhanbad do you think other colleges other iits or nits will accept da scores for admission to cs courses and vice versa very 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 good question ecstatic if it's very good question see um what i think is right again this is the first year that gate da happened okay um what i think is gate cs will be used for both for your da for your cs but gate da will only be used for da because the level of questions that were asked for cs in your da paper is not appropriate to judge a cs candidate it is like saying gate da was allowed by every other branch as well right a btech in double e was also able to prepare for gate da and appear for it a btech in mechanical could also prepare for da and appear for it btech in civil also was able to prepare and appear for it are all of them also eligible for cs courses i don't think so okay there might be some colleges which say that we will accept a gate cs or a gate da score under the condition that your btech is in a cs program okay that is how thing that is how if i were in the admission cell of a college i would think through okay if i want to accept someone in a cs course i will first have to make sure that he has done a btech in cs what is the sequence of subject should second there is a should i study for gate as a beginner for 2020 a slightly unrelated question but still i will try to answer guys because you guys want to study that's why i'm here as a teacher i have to answer every question so very good question asked rs um uh see um okay see you have to study all subjects okay how do you study them is a good question actually yeah. if you are not sure about how to start just buy one small book which is the book on the c programming language by cunningham and ricci and start reading it from the first page first page to the last page if you do that it will teach you a bit about os certainly it teaches you about c because it's a book on c that is also one of the subjects it will also teach you a bit about os it will also teach you a bit about computer architecture and then start looking at the core subject also since we also have proffer a gate cs program feel free to join our program as well um the the fees is also very less compared to other competitive competitive coaching centers um i will be also a teacher in i am also faculty in the same good coaching center feel free to join us as well if you want a more structured guidance and more level but what i can suggest you for now again i have to respect all financial people all with all financial discipline if you are not sure how to start take the c programming book by dunningham then cunningham and ricci which are the, who are the founders of c language they have a book very very small book 200 pages read from the first page to the last page that's it the, you will you will get a sense of what i have to study okay rs fine let's move on uh let's talk about private colleges okay private colleges um some some every college has a complicated way of taking people but um but still you need to know right so i heard i hope everyone has heard about the college bits pilani which pilani is one of the best private colleges in india today okay um bits pilani has two ways of admission either you can use your gate score to get an admit there or they have an exam called bits hd it's higher degree program exam the level of questions of bits hd is much much lesser than gate they don't ask very difficult questions so for people who have not appeared for the gate 
or people who have screwed up the gate badly you have time till may june the exam start from may june only keep following the website for exact dates and you can select to go for bits hd uh, you can go for bits hd uh, prepare for bits hd give the exam and then you have options like um, goa pilani or hyderabad the three bits pilani branches that have or you can also go via gate score now you might ask me is there a difference between any other difference yes there is another difference which is if you go via gate score there will be a 40% fee waiver you'll get a 40% fee waiver again keep following their website they announce that from time to time as per last year i'm telling everything this year though i don't know i don't sit in the bits plan admission cell but what till the last year what i can say is if you admit through gate score you'll get a 40% fee waiver which you won't get if you join via bits hd okay triple it hyderabad is the best college in private if you want to do a masters let me tell you that okay hands down no not even thinking twice their selection process includes an exam called pgwe post graduate entrance exam that will help you to get into triple it hyderabad they also have an ms program which for which you have to give an interview triple it bangalore is one of the other colleges where you don't have to give any exams and if you have a gate score of greater than 650 you can you have a chance triple it bhubaneswar is another college it's a government college so triple it is indian institute of information technology bhubaneswar while triple it bangalore and hyderabad are international institute of information technology which are the private equivalent of colleges so triple it bhubaneswar if you have a greater than 600 gate score then you can go for mtech and cs if you want a more challenging exam to appear for then there is something called indian in statistical institute or isi there they offer an mtech in cs and ai program as well um, you can you can specialize in that as well right because if you know a little bit about ai also ai is all about stats and mathematics so mtech in cs from isi would be also one of the good options to consider if you want to go for ai so these are the best colleges when it comes to private that you can try and go for okay moving ahead yeah so i think i discussed this during my entire presentation from the start which is if you have a rank of x what do you do if you have a rank what do you do so still i will just summarize things here um so if you have a rank from 1 to 400 okay i'm saying rank as r okay so rank variable is r then you go for mtech in iits or ms in iits okay if you have a rank of 400 1 to let's say 800 then go for ms in iits okay or you go for mtech in newer iits or nits the top nits right trichy varangal etc etc if you have a rank of 800 1 1200 to you go for mtech in um I'm taking uh, triple ITs, which is triple IT Bangalore or triple IT there uh, are Bhubaneswar and all that. And um, um, in the parallel, um, you can also go for uh, your. Uh, you can appear for the bits exam, bits HD. Okay. Also, if you are in this bracket, four hundred one to eight hundred, you have a huge chance to get. Pilani CS from your gate score, okay. So you can also apply there as well. Okay. So bits HD, you can prepare for that, and you can also prepare for PG double E, which is your exam to get into Triple IT Hyderabad. Okay. So this is the entire scenario. So uh, there were some doubts that people had. in my lecture thanks for yeah aditya there are some doubts in 
YouTube can you check yeah I saw the doubts I addressed them um, uh, uh, so typically again let me just go through it again how to stay motivated was one of the doubts asked by RS uh, see guys uh, that's the thing right so before you start preparing for the gate just see why do you want to go for a gate right do you want to have uh, do you want to um, learn in IITs do you, do you think that um, I want to study in IITs I have a career in IIT I want to study with the best minds in India together then maybe that's a good way to stay motivated um, around 22 lakhs is the fees that are saying for in US again you can make it to 11 lakhs by signing a work permit uh, what is the scope of building new startups in IIT Bombay? As I said, in these IITs, you have something called an incubation cell that gives you funding and helps you to build your startup. You do not have to, do not have to worry about funding if you have a good idea. That's what they want. That's what the incubation cell is for you. Okay. Uh, ecstatic asked, uh, like ISC and ISM, do you think other IITs or NIC and IITs will accept DA score for admission to CS courses and vice versa? As I said, that's a very, very good question. Okay. Your gate CS score will can, can actually be used for a DA like it was all these years, right? But for gate DA, they might use it only for the DA MTech in AI part, or they can use it for the CS part, considering you have a BTech in CS. Okay, or else there's no point. Okay, uh, what is the sequence of subjects should you study for gate as a beginner for 2025? So very good question again. As I said, you, if you need structured guidance and all that, we are a team and uh, we make sure that you, you guys are well equipped with all the subjects that are asked in the gate. So you can enroll in our courses as well. This is, um, uh, the, the, the prices are also not too high, right? And uh, they are very, very competitive compared to the, uh, less compared to the our competitors. So you can see, you can also go to the website and have a look into it. And uh, still, if you don't, if you feel um, uh, you can't pay that much now, it's fine. Uh, as I suggested, take just order the C programming language book by Cunningham Ritchie. Read from the first page to the last page. You will understand what you have to study. Okay. So these are the doubts I had in the chat. Uh, again, I will let the team from IGC conclude because I don't have anything else to say unless someone has any question. Uh, feel free to ask. Uh, apart from that, all the best and uh, make sure you take the right decision. Okay, this was more of a guidance as to what to do and what not to do. Okay, maybe it was, uh, I hope it was helpful for you guys. Um, thank you. I will let the team handle the rest of the yeah. stream. Uh, thank you, Anand uh, Aditya, for your insightful session. So, I guess uh, we have answered their all queries and uh, if they have any further query, they can reach out to uh, give a number for uh, our courses. And I hope uh, this session will be useful to many, those who watch it later as well. Thank you, Aditya, for your time and support. Thank you. We'll wind up. OK, thank you, guys, uh, for joining the session. We'll end this call now. Bye. And all the best.